Hi, Jules. Hi there. Hey. Oh. Alrighty. Okay. Um, okay, we're going to start then. Um, and unless anyone, would anyone like to share anything that went particularly well on Monday mm -hmm. or, or any other insights or um, thoughts about that at all? Gary, TJ and team all were quality. I had a great session. Oh, nice okay. shout. Oh, great thank shout. you. Thank you. Good work, guys. Good work. Praise, praise indeed. Okay, there. That's great. Um, the boy is pretty high. Yep, you said it. Yeah. <laughs> the bar is set pretty high. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Um, well, well, thank well, you, Kay, for saying that. It's all right, all three of you did so well. Mm. So well. Especially CJ. To get to get that needle at the end was uh, pretty surprising. Yeah. Wow. So hard. Right. Yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> but yeah. you, you did a great job. Wow. Respect. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Well, that's um so each session, each session we can build on the last. So uh, let's see, let's see what we can manage today. Um, all right then. So we're going to start off. Um, we're going to start off with the Sphinx. So uh, does everyone remember their key things about the Sphinx? Elbows, elbows under shoulders. Um, <clears throat> There we go. Brilliant. Hey, Steve. Hi there. Apologies You're a right. bit late. I had a, had a call from my dad and oh. rabbit and on. Oh. Is he all <laughs> right? Is that recorded? Oh, oh. oh, that's good. Glad, good to see you. Well, the guys were just telling me how how amazing the Monday session was. Yeah, nothing to do with me, mate. It was... All the uh, all the attendees. Oh. I was just an observer. Oh. Maybe provided yeah, one or two nice. jokes along the way. <laughs> the audience smiling. Yes. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Alrighty, guys, that's looking very good. So, um, so while you're there, just breathing away in your sphinx, you can also think about the following question. So this is a session on squatting. Why are we doing the Sphinx? What possible reasons can we have for doing the Sphinx in a squatting session? Answers on the postcard. Uh, well, in a good squat, the spine is in extension, not in flexion. And this is certainly an extension position. Oh, Outstanding, sir. Tom, well done, mate. Well done. Now, there is another tenuous... Well, actually, Steve might might say it's not so tenuous, but there is another tenuous reason why why we're also doing this. But, Tom, you're, you're spot on with that, with that one. Any other...? That must be an answer somehow with the hips that, that you open it up. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So... Um, but the clue is in um, you, the clue is in the plural there, Linda. Oh, the plural. Okay, lots of everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's also a symmetrical pattern in a kind of a way, isn't it? You're you're kind of um, yeah. Although I guess what you're doing now, Linda, is you're moving into an asymmetrical pattern. But essentially, your legs and your hips. Your legs and your hips are doing kind of the, the, a mirror image of themselves, really. So, which of course is what the is what the squat is all about. Squat is a symmetrical pattern. Okay, take a break, guys. Let's um, let's rock and roll into the baby roll. What would be? Uh, so.
So, um, so we're kind of going from an extension pattern now into a into a, something which is much more like the squat in some ways because it's a it's very much a flexion pattern. Um, but oh, I like TJ there, kind of using his rolling technique to get onto his back. That's oh, I think we'll give you a nine point nine, nine point seven there, TJ. I should, should have seen him, TJ and, and Gary using the Turkish get up to get up to sitting. Um, Timo, I, Timo couldn't be asked with any of that. Like he just smashed through it. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Good work, guys. <clears throat> Again, just uh, just check in with your breathing pattern while you're doing this. Just make sure that you're owning that movement rather than just surviving it. That's really good, that, Gary. You can see you using the, the legs as a lever. And that so much improved from where you were. Look, at, look yeah. how easily you just roll from side to side. Yeah. Gary, that's a massive difference. Wow, good work. You guys are making a lot of gains. That's a good idea, Kay. It was Steve's idea. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd pass it off as your own if I were you. If he wasn't here, I would do. <laughs> <laughs> Work to get hold of them, TJ. Well done. Um, hey, Gary. I'm just just thinking on there because of the how free flowing you you appeared doing that. Did you find you were able to? Or do you find you were able to integrate the head and neck movement into the but um, happy baby roll or? <laughs> you know. Because it would be interesting to see if it, if it makes any difference. Because but both both ways would actually be of value, where if you can roll to side to side without turning your head, because then that's like a true log roll. But then also turning the head just to, to see if that does make a difference. It, it, sort of, it just shows a little bit more integration of the um, dissociative spine. Yeah, that looks like yeah, that looks like yeah. it does. Gary, you're you're nailing that, mate. Yeah, <laughs> that's really good. Nice one. Nice one. Okay then. All right. So from there, shall we? Um, bum, bum, bum. Shall shall we move into uh, like a quadruped position, and and then moving moving back into kind of a like a, a horizontal squat pattern. So um get get everything lined up as as normal. You can create a bit more width with your knees if you want. Uh, just to afford a bit more space for your pelvis to drop into. And then we'll just see Bella come. Going from your quadruped, you can just drop back and get your get your bottom down towards your heels. And then if you want to, you can drop your elbows and, and, and sit, down, sit into that posture, breathe a little bit or a lot. <laughs> and, and try to do so as, as Crispin has demonstrated there. First of all, go back into the position, leaving your arms straight. Because what can often happen in this situation, your sort of movement brain almost perceives it as getting lower is is a is achieving the target when it's not achieving the target is moving the hips back into full flexion while the knees are going into full flexion. So don't allow you sort of kid yourself that when you hit the block at the hips that you start lowering the chest, you know, that that denies you awareness. So what you want to do is just see how far you can go back, just moving the hips. And then if they go all the way back, great, then lower the uh, the chest. 
because that will actually be accentuating the hip flexion. Yeah. Okay. But if if you can't lower the hips down there, you'll actually be substituting um, thoracic flexion for hip flexion. Okay. You know, which is not what we want. And you know, the, the and the big thing of what we don't want. Do not deny yourself awareness. Okay. Like when you see these idiots in the gym with huge amounts of weights uh, over their shoulders, but behind their head, and they they they'll tell you they're doing squats when they're actually just doing knee dips and bending forward at the waist. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them are too big to tell, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I keep that bit of wisdom to myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're trying to go down with elbows. First, you're sitting on your feet. Pine's looking better all the time there, though, uh, Tom. No, no, no. no. On your feet with the way you are. Now you're elbow. Yes. You got all the way back, Timo? Yeah. That's no. cool. So from here and, yeah. and lower the elbows, yeah. Don't allow the hips to come back up, though. Steve, do you, do you have any comments on on the position of the toes in this in this movement? Um, not 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 really. I I think if you if you tuck the toes under, it it's more more demanding. I think getting the range of movement. Let me just see myself. Yeah, that's good, Timo. How, how does that feel? Very good. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice. <clears throat> the, the 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 key the, the the usual different difference that makes the difference with tucking the toes under is the sort of reflexive contraction of the glutes, which in you know glute contraction here is actually going to Pull your out of flexion. You know, not not that it would necessarily reflexively work because you know that's not what you're after. But uh, guys, you you guys are doing really well at this. It's really good. Do you know? I I, I don't know. Jump again, Steve. I don't know what you'd say. You could. I don't know if you want to experiment with like slightly different. Um, knee width apart like you could sometimes even just adjusting the, your knee width out by i don't know like a, an inch or so just to kind of give yourself a little bit more space um yeah yeah i, I think it's, it's certainly valid from a standing position to explore the the, the implications of of foot position and, and foot width in the squat because it's, you're always getting that trade-off between mobility and stability stroke support. Yeah. The more your feet are underneath you, the greater the, the vertical drive you're going to get. That force is, can just go in a straight line. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to come in angled and then be directed straight. But the closer they are underneath you, the, the, more, the less mobility the posture is affording you. So maybe you've got great mobility and you don't need to be afforded mobility by the posture. Um, certainly that's not me. I need both um, hip width as a minimum, um, maybe a little, a little wider, and I also need external rotation. Whereas I, I don't know if Rob York is on tonight. He's but, not, no. No, but mm. Rob squat, he, he can have his feet pointing forward under his hips and he... He yeah. just drops down like it's the easiest thing in the world. Yeah. Yeah, Chelsea's yeah. probably like that as well. I, I just don't have that mobility. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. It, it's, um, it's funny because that, that's one thing which sort of you know highlights how poor most people's um mobility and range of movement is. They they always think that I've got great mobility and, and think, you know, give give themselves the excuses if you know that that's just the way I'm made. <laughs> my my natural mobility is ain't, ain't good at all. Um, what what's the 
it is it <laughs> is it the Biden scale? Is it for measuring hyper hyper mobility? What scale? No. Um, or is the Biden scale dementia? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. What's the what's the scale for hyper mobility? Um, well, e either way, I'm uh, real yeah. low on that. Like, I, I don't. I have to work for to maintain mm -hmm. all of my range of movement. But there's some areas where you know, like the wood wall stretch. People look at that and go, "Wow, hasn't he got great?" No, that is the baseline. Yeah, yeah, less yeah. than that, you're short, you know, and mm. you know there, there's so many areas where you, you know, you know, you, you, when you go into a, a crab, it, you know, there's people can to do that real bend and get that, get the um, the mid spine really high. No, not me, uh, you know. So you, know, you you look at Chelsea uh, as a as a great indicator, and I, I think Linda as well. You know, it's got brilliant range of movement. No, I'm pretty <laughs> stiff. <laughs> if if I if I don't if I don't have an expansive movement lifestyle, which both having a nine to five job and or having a brain injury usually denies you outright. If if I don't, you know, really focus on on trying to maintain it, I I lose range of motion, you know, you know, quicker than I lose the colour of my hair. <laughs> more of likes to point out. Yeah, it's it's the Baton, it's the Baton scale for hypermobility, isn't it? The Baton. I was I wasn't too far off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um alrighty guys, well done. Um any comments so far, any reflections or thoughts on any of that? Uh, yeah. So what we'll do then is we'll start to move a little bit more vertically. Uh, and I think I think Timor should demonstrate this next one for us, actually. Um, so, Timor, you're in the position, you know, the um, uh, I can't remember what we call it now. The, um, the, the, the flow where you go from quadruped into a squat and then into a crab. Frog flow. It the is the frog flow. frog flow. Yeah. OK. Yeah. So could, could you give us a demo of that? Draw one or two steps forward, mate, as well, as you're supposed to do in the start of the frog flow. And uh, yeah. Timor, your yes. your legs at the moment are a, are a little wide. They're, they're at squat width. If you pull them under, mm. but crawl width. Mm. Let's do it the right way, Steve. That, that's it, mate. <laughs> He's trained them well. Yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant, mate. Exactly. That lines it all up. That's it. Yeah. No. So what Timor's doing there is he's tucked his toes under and he's eased himself back onto his heels and he's going to see if he can just hold that squat position um, before transferring one hand back, then the other hand, and then you're into a crowd position. <clears throat> Breathe that attack to your away, mate. Cycle a few breaths. Sorry, Chris, been interrupted there, mate. No, 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 it's all good. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the frog flows to complete that. You can just stretch out one of your legs. One at a time, nice and controlled. And then back. And then, and then when Timor's ready, he's going to see if he can get from that posture, bring himself back into the squat posture. Absolutely. And then 
see if we can get one hand in front of him again. Big breath in before you move this hand and breathe out while you're doing so. And, uh, and forward. Timo, that's great. That's really good. That was absolutely magnificent, money. Flawless. Brilliant. Really, really nice. Really nice. So it's so impressive, that mate. If you have a look at this this video again and see how assured each movement was. There was no sort of throwing yourself into a move or even going into an area where you, you were unsure of the outcome. The whole thing was so controlled. Really impressive. Yes, it's the oh, yes. last session, you remember? You were telling me how to move my left leg yeah. in the crab. Uh-huh, yeah. So that's one of the few times that was successful. Yeah, ah, magic. Brilliant to see, mate. It really is. You know, yeah, and it's you. such a platform to start building off now, though. Yeah. You know? yeah. And and contrast the amount of attacks here you, you're displaying there to where you, you, you were previously. Yeah. Yeah. And, no contest. Yeah. And, and, and every, every neurophysio will tell you that a taxi only ever gets worse. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not here, I don't mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Timo, you, you can just you can just do that to order now. That's that is that's really nice. Now Corey's been warming up here, so we're going to go back to Corey. Yeah. <laughs> Corey's sorry, going sorry, into... sorry, Crispin. Just one little thing with um, oh. with with Timo there. Yeah. Um, and you you might see this when you um, uh, review the video when you did the crawl forward. Um, you, you certainly had a, a minimum of two strides, and the first, the first one, brought the knee forward, great, and then the next one, like the the next part of the uh, the sequence, you moved your torso forward, and then it was almost like a um, a controlled stop of a fall. You moved the torso forward, and then the hand had to come out, and that's actually good. It, it's like in the same way that, that walking to an extent and certainly um, running is a controlled fall. You, you, if you've got a, the, the authentic posture, when you move, the, the next limb automatically goes where it needs to. I and mean, it needs to go there to, to stop you falling. But then because it's authentic, it then feeds into the next movement. But, and what you'll see is when you went forward with the right hand, you actually reached with the hand before the um, the torso. And whilst it might have looked a little bit more controlled, it was actually a little bit more exposed. So what, what I'm, I'm saying is, is, is when you're doing that crawling, don't worry so much if when you move forward with that, with the torso, that moving the hand underneath is... Um, it's a bit reflexive and almost like a con you know a controlled stop of a fall because well that that's that's how the baby learns <laughs> it moves it forward it goes I've got to put that there to stop the fall and then it realizes that yeah this actually allows me to progress mm. so you know you you'll just become more comfortable with that and it'll just be part of what you do as opposed to a reaction so hopefully that makes some sense yeah it does. I yeah. didn't think it was okay, but you're saying that it's okay? Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's exactly what like I'm saying. A, it's like a violent movement. Yeah. You know? And it, it, it's it's the right movement, though. And you, you'll, you'll get, you'll just get better at it. Because that, that's that's the thing with, with trying to, trying to learn the crawl cognitively to an extent. Um. Because it's a, it is a bit of a dynamic movement that you, you want two things moving at once. And that's a little bit difficult for the injured brain when it's trying to learn a movement, you know. So it, you, you have to try to ride two horses with one arse, really, where <laughs> you want them to keep it natural. But also you, you want a cognitive awareness as well because you need to know whether you're doing something right or not. So as long as as long as it's safe, 
You know, if you can put yourself by moving the torso there and if the hand has to go a bit quickly, that that's fine. And you'll also you'll also realize you'll get the feel for whether or not it's something you can improve on. Or whether no, no, actually, I'm actually just surviving this, you know. And oh, what shit. you did before that—that that wasn't surviving it. That was that was executing it correctly. Yeah, you can get a little bit better at it, but it was it was authentic in my book anyway. Sorry, anyway, Corey, back to the stage. Back to you, mate. Let's um, let's see what you're doing. That's it, mate. Head up, looking forward if you can. Because what that does as well, that stops you looking at the hand. And so you you have to, you know, hand over. Really nice, really nice. Well, <clears throat> Corey, that's really nice, and uh, and so it, it, it's also um, how did that feel? Yeah, really, really nice. I noticed that um, when you were coming back, you, you used your left arm, you used your left arm to regain your balance to come forward into a quadruped. So it's um so when when you're when you're getting up at five in the morning to practice that you can you can also have a think about um what would it be like to bring your right arm forward as well or or to bring your right arm forward first of all and, see, yeah. and, and something um for for people to think about and a, a lot of the time because it's a very demanding movement expansive wise when you um. When you're in the crab position after you've extended both legs and you're going to transition back, yeah. see if you can crawl the hands forward as far forward as you can before you then reach over. I mean, it it that can be difficult, but what I suppose what I'm saying is don't feel obliged to just accept the position where the hands are and have to lean forward from there. If you can move the hands closer. Which is something which Timo does really well, then uh, then do so. Okay. Yeah, that that transition is a little painful for my hip going back. Yeah. And so, like, I don't know if it would be beneficial. Like, if I could, yeah, just this transition to here. Yeah. It doesn't help me. Well, because one of the things you can do as well is potentially change the position of your feet. Yeah. I got. I know it. it it's it's something which I can't breeze through. Definitely, definitely the the transition which you're about to make now, coming back. I, I would love it if I could make it keeping my heels on the ground. There you go. <laughs> but well, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. My, my my guess is I don't think I'd be able to. No, I can't. Nice squat to stand though, bud. Thanks. Get in there. Well done, Corey. Well done. Well done. Yeah. So, um, 
Uh, Jules, let's um, uh, do, you, do you want to have a try of this, Jules? What's um, <clears throat> it's freezing now? I don't know what it's like there. Oh, thick. oh. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it's a real narrow, yeah, real narrow squat position you're in there, mate. <clears throat> Well done, Jules. Well done. Now think of that's it. Think about your squat position. Move it to what you, well you think is optimal. Now, if you yeah, can't well that, that's it. Excellent, mate. It's ah, exactly what I was talking about that I can't do. Do I do another stand here or is it not? It, yeah, if, if if you can, mate. It's it's all, always always useful because it sort yeah. of ratifies. That's excellent, mate. It ratifies yeah. the, your, your squat position. And also gives you a little bit more information of what works and what doesn't, or what works well. Nicely done, Jules. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Great, great work. Great work. Linda. <clears throat> Nice. You got nice, nice whip there, Linda. Well done. Good, Jalen. Yeah. Good job. Mm. Yeah, that's so good. I can't do that. Oh, I, um, Not me. Yeah, no, me. <laughs> That's it, Linda. Well done. Good work. That was great. Yeah. You know, um, Linda, you know the, the squat position you were in? Obviously, you, you stood up. Yeah. When, when you were standing, would would you um would you say that that your feet were in the position that you would normally put them in if you were standing and then you were going to go into a squat? No, okay. but I can do a narrow squat. Yeah, yeah, that that's what I thought. It's one of the reasons why I was so impressed that you stood up out of it because I know that you you've had a little bit of a history of struggling to stand. I still, out I still have. Moment. I gave it up. <laughs> <laughs> but today. Um, even though you had a really wide position, mm -hmm. you were able to push out of it. Now, a, a more narrow position, as, as long as it's you know uh, sustainable, is usually provides more drive upwards than okay. a wider one. Okay. So it it's even more impressive for how you're progressing and how mm -hmm. one of the big things would be your thoracic extension. Because you need if if you're wide, you've got to get everything stacked over, yeah. um, so it stays pretty much over the same spot as you're going up. Otherwise, 
I try and to. Goes forward, stuff goes back, and it, and that's yeah. what that's what keeps the brakes on because you, you can't just drive from one central position. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was uh, that, that's really good. And thank you. Did you think you're getting over getting over the hump a little bit with <laughs> with that problem with not being able to get out of the deep squat? I think so. Yeah. 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 There, there's definitely a progress. Also in walking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. oh, Very good job, Lynn. Well Thank you. Um, Tom. <clears throat> okay. Do ninety. Nicely done, Tom. From a pretty from a pretty narrow base there as well. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, you kept the heels down as well there. Well done. Um, first class, mate. Well done. Nice. Great. Excellent. Very nice indeed. Thank you, Tom. Good job. Does that feel okay? Yeah. I'd love, love to be able to do the wider foot position of the squat, but uh, working on it. Yeah, the shoe balance, mate. That's that's the one for you. <sighs> Work on the internal rotation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because ironically, you might feel like you can't get any more external rotation. Well, if you started from a more internally rotated position, automatically the 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 range of external rotation you can get improves. Do you see what I mean? Because a lot of the time people start off externally rotated and that's why they can't get any any further range. Mm -hmm. Hey, how's, how's the frog flow looking for yourself? Mighty fine. <laughs> oh, excellent. excellent. Expectations are high. I should have said that, should I? Mm -hmm. Good job, Kay. Wow. Wow, nice, Kay. Very nice. Why do you have to talk? <laughs> <laughs> really nice. Really nice. Excellent. Excellent. Great Excellent. stuff, Kate. Yeah. Really good. Really good. Thank you. All righty. So uh, let's go to Gary. Gary, how far how far through this process do you think is gonna is gonna because if you if you can just reverse into a squat from the crawl, that would be magnificent, Kelly. Keep those elbows down. Let's get the knees right first. Uh, you're gonna need the, those feet a little wider, mate. If you're gonna go back, not just the knees, the feet. And keep leaning forward. Keep leaning forward on those hands. Keep leaning forward on the hands. 
and then walk the hands back. That's it, Gary. Lean forward, lean forward, Gary, lean forward. Oh, Gary, you nearly had that. That, that was really good. That was awesome, Gary. That was really good. Is, it's so indicative of progress, that, mate. Yeah. So Gary, progress. I think I think you'd have made that if you hadn't tried to take your left hand behind you. I think if you'd, if you'd kept both... Gary, do you, do you want to have one more go at that? Just And just see if you can keep both hands... You had both hands in front of you. Uh, I think it was only when you started to take the left hand behind you that, that you lost your, your bearings a bit. Let's get into the quadruped first, mate. So hands on the shoulders. That left hand's outside the shoulder, mate. That's it. And when you want to get those knees sort of level, so that that that's it. Now keep the weight on the hands. When you lift those knees up, keep the weight on the hands. And if if something tells you that there's something needs to be improved with the position, you go back onto your knees and you improve it. Keep that's it. Walk the hands and keep the weight on the hands. Those knees are, yeah, feet are a little bit too narrow there, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Up, up to you if you want another go. More than welcome to to help you if you're a bit fatigued. You can, yeah. Uh, Good work, Gary. Put TJ through the grinder. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Well done, Gary. Well done. Yeah, I think um width width of stance is a is a very useful very useful thing. Um, TJ, you have the floor, sir. <clears throat> Excellent discipline, TJ. Great stuff. <laughs> Look how readily you can get into that position now, where previously Julie had to get a uh, be on standby with a strap around your middle. So, right, so as you walk it back, keep the weight over the hands, mate. That's it. Keep the weight. Walk the hands back. Walk the hands back. Lower those hips. Keep walking the hands back. Look at that, mate. TJ, that is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> yeah, nice boy. That is really good. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, no hands <laughs> okay transfer the weight onto the hands and get stable now breathe in that position mate breathe now you're going to have to walk the hands forward ever so slightly don't go for big steps push into the ground On that's it on the other one now make sure you're happy with the. that's it now those knees can probably go down there Wow. That's, TJ, that's amazing. Walk the hands forward still. <clears throat> Get the shoulders over the hands. Shoulders over the hands. <laughs> TJ, fantastic, mate. <laughs> that is awesome, mate. <laughs> TJ, that is really good. TJ. Yeah. Now, um, okay, right. That was really good. Okay, now there was something that TJ did, which I, was I say, thought. We just flick the camera back on to TJ. Uh, that, that's a really helpful position that you're in there to help with that transition. If you're comfortable in that position, 
you know, once again, you know, you could just put your weight straight onto your hands, walk yourself back, and you could get into the squat. That's, that's um, it's great yeah. stuff, mate. Sorry. Right. Sorry. Sorry. There was um, there was something in particular that uh, TJ is doing very well there. Walk your hands back. That's it. Which is, if if you look at the alignment of his feet in relation to his knees, his um, TJ has been able to line up his knees with his toes. And uh, and as Steve was saying earlier, like a lot of that comes from like a lot of different um, a lot of different kind of qualities. Like you know, you're talking about the internal, the ability of the, the hips to internally rotate, having good internal rotation. Um, but there was one more thing that I thought we could look at today for those of you that are are more comfortable to start something in standing. And that is um, something that uh, uh, something that I remember working a lot on in Tai Chi. So, because of course the, the hip mobility drill is is just probably the best thing ever <laughs> in order to develop like internal rotation. But mm. it's oh, yes, no. okay. And so, of course, the squat yeah. demands that the yeah. squat demands symmetry in, in the movement that we're that we're, we're creating really. So, and of course there's gonna be a lot of carryover from the qualities that the hip mobility drill can give us. But this is an idea, this is something um, that we used to work on a lot in, in the Tai Chi, in the Tai Chi that we used to do. Um, and to do this, you can use a door frame, but sometimes like a kitchen sink, which is solid, <laughs> is also quite good. So I'm gonna try and demonstrate this to see what you guys think. Um, and to do this, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a fictional sink. <laughs> so what we what we're looking for what we're looking for because I noticed in some of you in some of you it's it's easy for the toes to begin to migrate out and the knees to migrate in like this. Do you see that? And so um, uh, what TJ was doing really well there. Was he was he was lining up, he was lining up his toe with his knee. And so that, that creates a lot of structural strength for later the ability to stand up and sit down by, by, by treating that alignment of the knees. When you need to do this, then the, the if you like the upward force has to travel not in a straight line, which which makes it more difficult. So what we imagine is that if you imagine, um, imagine this pole is the kitchen sink, and I've got my feet, um, I don't know, a comfortable width apart, or just a little bit wider than shoulder width, um, but not to the toes aren't too turned out. Mm -hmm. uh, and you notice, like I've got trainers on now. If if I do this like in socks, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to really work hard to be able to keep that alignment. But there's there's something about the uh, the torsion that the, the trainers on a on a floor can give that will help that will help a little bit. So okay. imagine this is the top of your kitchen sink, and you're holding onto this, or or you can imagine um, holding onto a door frame. Or something. Uh, and what I'm going to do is as I drop down. I'm going to see if I can keep my knees in line with my toes, right? So, and now I'm going to come up. So, and if I do this from the side, like, like so, um, I want to be just using the, uh, like the kitchen sink just enough to hold on to it so that I'm getting a, a balanced amount of, of ankle, knee, and hip movement. So it's not it's not just all going into my knees. I'm not just bending. I'm just I'm not just flexing with my hips. Um, and sometimes, um, look. sometimes having a target to aim for, having a target to aim for can be very helpful. It's 
give some, yeah. So you're just holding on and you can, by holding on, you can just drop, drop down. But you're trying to, but you're trying, it's, it's not the whole, it's not the whole story for sure. But you're trying to retrain that, that alignment that TJ has demonstrated. Um, so that as you, if you feel that your toes are starting to externally rotate and coming in, then you've got a chance to, um, you've got a chance to readjust. And, and of course, if you've got someone else at home with you, you know, Steve's talked before about um, if the knees are coming in, applying an inward force so that the, um, your system has something to push against while you're holding on the support. So, um, yeah, so if, um, so Steve, do, do you have any comments on any of that? So, any, um, any reflections or thoughts? I, I, would, I, would, I would say that, that yeah, you, you're correct in that. We, you can, um, you're correct in, in, in everything you're saying there. Um, and you can use that as, as a way to generate greater hip mobility. Uh, but what I would also say is, I, like num number one, you you never go anywhere near pain on on that, um, and and if if you are very externally rotated in the squat, well you don't go straight for going the toes straight ahead. Just try it slightly, um, st slightly less externally rotated, but having exactly that focus which Crispin was saying. Of keeping the the knees over the toes, and that that is the that that that's the pass fail. Um, you you've got to have the the knees over the toes in in this in this drill. Um, so if by turning the toes in any amount, it causes the knees to cave in. Well, no reset, and find where the toes have to be. Yeah. I suppose, yeah. suppose that that's that's the best way of looking at it. Finding the sort of finding the the limit of ability where the the toes are are in as far as they can go while still affording the the knees to stay over and not eliciting pain is the And and you're definitely that's yeah, completely agree, Steve. And you're definitely not you're definitely not trying to achieve like parallel feet. That that's not the idea. That the toes always want to be pointing out a little bit so that you've got that you've got that hip knee alignment. Um, so. Would you say if it does hurt to put point your toes more out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it if it hurts when you're going down, and well, that's the way cool. to phrase it. If it hurts when you're going down. And yeah. turning the toes out both alleviates the pain and affords a, a yeah. deep squat. Yeah, but but the, you know it's that it's the Goldilocks zone again because if you go too far out, well then your um, my knees came in. Well, yeah, you 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 totally lose the arch support of the foot, and then so the foot will roll in, which will mean the the knees will roll in. So the, the other factor, the other factor of this, because to, to achieve the squat, we need um, we need a balance of both thoracic extension, um, the alignment of the hips, knees, and ankles and, and toes. Now, so what, what Tom's doing here has a lot of merit, but you can also see that when Imagine if what Tom was holding wasn't going to tip back. Imagine that was a kitchen sink, that the, the top of the chair is the kitchen sink. Um, Tom, if you come up again, um, the um, what the kitchen sink or the, or uh, let's have a look, or the, or the door frame will do, it will create, um, it will create that ability to balance your whole body because by leaning back on something just 5%, if you can, if you can hold on to something mm -hmm. just 5%, rather than doing the squat completely freestyle, it will mm -hmm. allow you to align everything 
at the same point as you as you drop down. Hi, Chelsea. It's good to see you. Hi. Hi. Basically, what what what's happening? If if especially if you try to go a little bit more narrow, or or if you're banging up against the the limits of your mobility, if you try to go any deeper. And where the floor most likely is going to be is going to be in your ankles. If you try to go any deeper, you're going to be moving your center of gravity behind you. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, that will mean you'll fall backwards. And so if you're using something solid like the kitchen sink. Or, I've got my sink. You know, <laughs> yeah, or, or the kit, or, or whatever sink. <laughs> if you do it there, that will allow you to get the, the, the balance. Yes. Now, now yes. The, the squat you're doing won't be 100% authentic because you're not controlling that own center of gravity. However, it will allow you to explore ranges of motion and Absolutely. different, different yeah. joint relationships. So you can yeah. get those, get experience of them, and then yeah. that will have crossover. When you are doing a natural squat without any any sort of support, absolutely, I, I so agree, Steve. I said, Linda, I, I don't know if you are able to drop your camera a little bit so we can, because oh, okay. I think it was, um, um, yeah, yeah. Could could you do that again, Linda? Okay. Maybe we can get a sense because I think. Um, what you've, a lovely you've range got... cookie you've got, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. the English part of the yeah. kitchen. This one is from England. <laughs> <laughs> now, Linda, but when you when you do this, just make sure, just make sure your toes are on the same line. Yes. So it, it could be the angle actually. I don't know if your right foot is slightly ahead of your left there. Oh, or that's the angle. That's the angle. If you come up again, just come up again into standing and just make sure, just when you're, yeah, you're, so kind of so your toes are on the same invisible line, if you like. Yeah. And then, yeah, just just do that. Just do that a couple more times, and just create that space between your knees, so that your knees, as best you can, but without pain, as Steve was saying, just you can just line up, and then up, and then pushing up again. Yeah. Yeah. How does that feel? I do that a lot. But I, it's I, okay. I think you might benefit from if you come back just a little bit further away from the sink, just a little bit. That's it. Now, 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 try that from there. So, what I'm interested in is how you come up out of the squat. Now, push your feet through the floor. Don't think about pushing yourself up. Think about pushing your feet through the floor. Oh, <laughs> that was narrow. <laughs> what did you touch? Touch at the back there. Yeah, because my range. <laughs> the, 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 um, your movement at the bottom of the squat before <laughs> you had to avoid the range cooker, that would seem so much stronger then. Uh -huh. okay. I don't know if, if you if you felt that. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt the stove. <laughs> so big breath, as you, big breath in as you sink down. And then push your feet through the floor. Keep your chest spread wide, shoulders back. Oh. The, yes. Now you went up in a straight line there. Yeah. You, you, you have a little bit of a tendency when you come up to raise the hips first uh -huh. and then bring the chest afterwards as if it's you coming out of a toe touch. But in, in, in that last squat there, you just went straight up. Okay. And I, I think... A focus for you of pushing your feet through the floor, yeah. rather than trying to push yourself up, will um, will produce a cleaner movement for you. Mm -hmm. You, thank you. <laughs> but that's it. Oh. Yeah. yeah, lovely tour of your kitchen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, guys, that, that's all I've got time for tonight. I've, I've got to head off, unfortunately. But um, Steve, did you want to do any other? work on the squat stuff uh i don't know, i think you, you covered it pretty well there um always always more to do yeah uh i mean if if anyone else wants to to go through the the squat to stand oh.
I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, that was really good. Yeah. Yeah, I think we um, can maybe leave it there then. I mean, once cool. again, some awesome performances there. Really, Gary, really PJ, nice. Yeah. Out, so Gary and PJ again, like my thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, really nice, guys. Really good, really good work. Um, what's the next session uh, on Thursday? What's, um, what's well, that will be uh, forward helping you to stand the morning. Brilliant. Is that is that the Chelsea oh, no, Forward I'll show? Be, it won't. It will be um, kneeling to um, kneeling to forward half kneeling. I think. I don't know. I'll have to. Uh... Yeah, because we, we yeah we did kneeling in the previous session, so yeah. Okay. Uh, just get mixed up with the neural development sequence and then also the sequence in which we, we do the foundation tier. Yeah. We put squatting before uh, the kneeling to forward, half kneeling transition. Right. Okay. Which is that, that's different than the neural development sequence. But for brain injury patients, my exclusive experience on it like, is that... Because the squats are symmetrical pattern, people are able to acquire that or reacquire it way, way quicker than they can acquire um, the tall kneeling to forward, half kneeling uh, transition. I want to say my exclusive experience. I mean, it's exclusive to me. I mean, <laughs> yeah. exclusively in, in every instance that I've uh, yeah. that I've come across, yeah. it's you know that that has has, has proven. I mean, it was absolutely the case for me. I I, I retained my squat pattern uh, post surgery. Um, it was the uh, you know the the asymmetrical hip, which I couldn't get, and and that's to say what I, I see in everyone. I'm sure everyone will agree with me, you know. So it's a little bit of a of, a, of an interesting um, difference between the baby learning to walk and the adult relearning to walk. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. Sorry, TJ. What's up, mate? I said I would agree. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. well, that's something I would wanted to ask TJ. Was, was that was today the first time you you've moved into a squat position? Uh, pretty much. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. it, it was pretty. It was pretty good for the first time, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also certain it's not going to be the last time as well. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, uh, yeah. Re remarkable performance, guys. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, pleasure to be involved. Great work, everyone. Great work. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you. See you, guys. Bye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Bye now. Thank you.